Welcome everyone. My name is Brandon Jewell with the CTE Foundation and today I am interviewing Yaz Neuberger who is a principal R&D engineer from Medtronic. Yaz, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. So we've got a few questions that I want to ask you but first and foremost uh, tell me just a, a quick elevator pitch of Medtronic and then maybe you can then move into what you do as a principal R&D engineer every day. Sure. Uh, so Medtronic is a very, very large company. And, uh, it's a very worldwide company and make medical devices. So a lot of the devices are diagnostic tools like um, big giant machines that, that do MRIs and x-rays and whatnot, but also devices that are implanted in the body. And so the mission of Medtronic is to help restore health and alleviate pain for patients around the world. And what I do, so I work on the design and development of heart valve replacement devices. So we have four valves in the heart um, of all, uh, all of our hearts and uh, blood flows through the various chambers in the heart. And sometimes someone's heart valve can have a disease on it where um, it doesn't function as properly as before. And so what we do is design and develop things that look something like this. So this is a replaceable heart valve implant that actually goes into the heart. Um, a physician will in, uh, implant that device. So I work on the design and development, which is um, very challenging and complex, but also really, really exciting. Uh, every day is different. Um, there's a lot of times where we do a lot of testing in laboratory settings uh, because of the devices that we need to um, develop, we need to actually test and make sure that they're safe and that they're effective. And there's a ton of testing that we do. So there are a lot of days spent in a laboratory, which is kind of fun. And then there are other days that I'm at my computer, like maybe even the whole day long, working on either some of the design aspects or the documentation or kind of communicating with people. And the, what's true every single day is that um, I'm always interacting with a ton of different people. Even now with everything being virtual, I'm you know, constantly talking to different people. Um, and we work in teams that are across the world. I mean, across the United States for sure, but even across the world, I have a lot of colleagues that are in Ireland and Mexico um, and other locations. So that's kind of exciting and challenging at the same time. But to add to that, I also teach at the junior college, uh, the Santa Rosa Junior College. I teach an engineering course there. And I absolutely love doing that because all the experiences that I'm getting with working with all these amazing people throughout the years, I get to share that with my students. And those are the future engineers. So of course I want to share my experiences with them. And, but also I learn a lot from them too and they really help keep me current. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to assume that that background there is what the inside of Medtronic looks like. Really cool, <laughs> really high tech. My background is, um, <laughs> and yes, Medtronic is really cool and super high tech. We have a lot of cool equipment, but my background is actually on the Starship Enterprise. Yeah. I'm a very big Star Trek fan. Um, this one in particular is from the next generation. Um, and I don't know, I think maybe Star Trek had a lot to do with me getting into engineering and science for sure. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nope. Um, and in fact, actually, that leads me to my next question, which is, why did you choose to get in? And maybe, maybe it's just all of Star Trek. <laughs> but you want to go into a little bit more detail about uh, how you got to where you are today? Sure. I, as long as I can remember, have loved science and math and I just love being curious and learning about what, you know, everything in the world. I love to know why things work the way they work. And of course, I liked a lot of subjects in school, not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, but watching Star Trek, even as a kid, um, it was really neat to see a lot of people that were super intelligent and doing a lot of um, engineering or technical stuff and really making a difference. And I it kind of it con I connected with that. So making a difference in the world. Of course, they were making a difference in the universe, but I'd like to at least make a difference in the you gotta small start, world. You got to start somewhere. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> I'll make my way towards that someday. <laughs> um, I chose to study materials engineering in college because it really was a good blend of a lot of different science and a lot of uh, math, but it was also connecting that piece where it explained why things are the way they are. And I absolutely loved that major. And I didn't exactly know what to do, I uh, learned about Medtronic a few years after graduating from a friend who was working there. And uh, he told me about medical devices. I'm like, whoa, that would be kind of neat to work on. Um, so I did apply and luckily I was accepted into Medtronic and now it's been 17 years that I've been at Medtronic. Um, but I have uh, done a lot of different roles at Medtronic. So even though it's one company, it's a huge company. There are almost mm -hmm. 90,000 people currently around the world. 
and I've had the opportunity to kind of switch around a lot, even locations and, you know, spend a few years here, a couple years there, a few years there. And it's really awesome. It feels like I've been at all these different companies, but still building my career at the same company. And every time I moved from one to the other, I was able to, of course, I had to learn new things. And that's part of the mm -hmm. beauty of, you know, doing something new is you get to learn new stuff and meet new people. But uh, I got to use the stuff I learned in my last role in my new role. And even though it was scary for a little while, um, I'm like, oh, well, you know, you, I was telling myself, talking to myself, saying, hey, you know, you brought something with you. And while you're learning this new stuff, why don't you apply what you know how to do? And that actually has been working really well. So what were some of the other Medtronic sites that you've worked at in the past? So I've been in Santa Rosa for off and on for most of it. And then um, uh, my husband and I moved to the East Coast. So I worked in the Danvers, Massachusetts office of Medtronic mm -hmm. for um, a little bit of time out there. And they were doing mostly manufacturing. So I, you know, I, I do research and development right now, but I got to learn a lot about manufacturing. And then the Portsmouth, New Hampshire site, which is... Um, they were working on electrocautery devices, so a lot of kind of electrical stuff, which I had no exposure to before. So I got to learn a lot about that field, uh, working out there for a while. And then we um, eventually moved back to the West Coast because for family and, you know, just other reasons to come back to the West Coast. And I right. did uh, return to the Santa Rosa site, but I joined a different business. So working on completely different products, even though I'm at the same location. So that's mm -hmm. been a wonderful opportunity, I think. So tell me about the types of skills that you need in order to be successful at your job. And then maybe you can also go into what kind of education it takes as well. Okay. So uh, with the Medtronic and I, I do do some, I do help with recruiting as well. So I have a little bit of background on this um, for the engineering department and the sciences within Medtronic specifically for those two regions, um, Medtronic really focuses on people that have um, you know, like mechanical engineering or um, uh, what was I going to say, like computer science in some cases, not, not so much the Santa Rosa site, but other locations of Medtronic look for computer science and computer engineering and electrical engineering, um, as well as bio, biomedical engineering and materials engineering, which is my major. Um, but of course, there are so many engineering degrees out there. So all of them are relevant in some way. So it's not like you have to be a mechanical or you have to mm -hmm. be a chemical. Um, you still learn to be an engineer in other ways. And um, for the science degrees, like we do have people who study biology or chemistry or physics. Um, there's a bioinformation, so statistics and math, like all these, there are so many kind of technical majors that Medtronic tries to hire. Um, and diversity, of course, is really important. And I assume a lot of the skills that you'll learn on the job. Absolutely. I think you go to school to learn how to learn and also get the foundation mm. of engineering work. How do you solve problems and just getting used to certain terminology. There's so much we learn on the job. I knew nothing about the body before. I mean, not much. I'm basic science maybe, but I studied materials engineering, not physiology. So I didn't know any of the physiology going into Medtronic and all of that I learned on the job. And that is okay. Although nowadays there's a lot more, you know, YouTube is a very nice resource nowadays mm -hmm. like, and lots of other sources online too. Um, mm -hmm. But there is a lot of on-the-job learning for sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you had mentioned how during this pandemic that we're currently in, mm -hmm. um, how we're all learning to work collaboratively yeah. um, through virtual means. And as simple as it sounds, I mean, like those kind of softer skills that you learned in, in, in high school and college, it's also, you know, something as basic as learning how to collaborate virtually is going to be a key skill going forward as well. Mm -hmm. So, absolutely. So, um, thinking back to when you were in high school, and now that you are an adult and you have your career path, do you think that you can give these students who are watching a piece of advice? Maybe something that you wish you knew back when you were in high school. Yeah. So, at that time, I. I knew that I loved science and math, but I didn't know anything. I didn't know what majors were. And, I'll, and I should say that, you know, this is pre-internet. So it's not like I just go up and Google something. Mm -hmm. I really, I really had no idea. I talked to my teachers and my parents and that was kind of all I had. I had no idea what I wanted to study. And, and I went to Cal Poly and Cal Poly made you declare a major. And I said, well, my dad's a computer scientist. Computers are cool. Maybe I'll put computer science. 
I had no idea what computer science was. And I went to Cal Poly and first two weeks of my computer science courses, I'm like, what is this? It, it's, it's amazing. My dad loves it. There are other people in the world that love it. It was not for me. It was absolutely not for me. So I spent a year trying to find the right major for me. So my advice is, you know, in your last couple of years of school, I know there's a lot of stuff going on. You have to apply to, you have to take all, you know, the standardized tests and you have to apply to colleges. You have to visit college. I mean, there's a lot to do uh, undoubtedly, but also spend the time kind of looking inward and just ask yourself, what, what do you love and what do you not love? What do you really don't like at all? And not just a subject, but the type of things to do. So for example, if you're a super outdoorsy person, you can't sit still in a chair, maybe being a programmer is not a thing to pursue. Um, or the other way around, maybe you just um, really like kind of focusing on something for hours at a time and you feel that you thrive in that environment, then maybe look for a career or a major that does a lot more of that instead of like having you fly all around the world if you're more of a homebody. You know, there's different, what is it, different strokes for different folks. So there are different mm -hmm. things for everybody. But my recommendation is if you love what you do, um, at least like, if you at least like what you do, it doesn't feel like work and it's a lot easier to be successful after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally relate to that. I think it's not only what you do, but maybe um, where you work as well. Yeah, so, for, for sure. example, you work for a company that is saving lives, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and that, that, that alone is, is quite the reward. And so yes. it, it's not only what you do, I think it's where you do it. That also is, yes. a, is, is a, something to take into consideration. For sure, it's very gratifying to know that I can use all this cool technically stuff to help people mm -hmm. because the technical stuff is what's fun for me. But what I really want my life to be focused on is to s serve in a way, I suppose, like to make things better, to make people better, to help people in any way. And, you know, education is part of that or teaching is part of that, but also working on um, cool life saving technology is also part of that, too. So it's really awesome to be able to combine those two things together. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Yaz, I just really want to thank you for taking the time uh, with us today and telling us about your journey and uh, giving us some advice. So we really appreciate I, it. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thanks, Yaz.